Hmm. Hello, welcome everyone. I am Dr. S. Telemon Laite, Assistant Professor of Political Science. In this lecture, we will discuss in details, but briefly, Hegel's dialectics, which is a part of Bachelor of Arts Political Science, second semester syllabus under Manipur University. First, who is Hegel, and then we'll see his dialectics. Who is Hegel? Hegel was a 19th century German philosopher who presented one of the most comprehensive and systematic philosophy from a logical starting point in the decades following Immanuel Kant. He is best known for his teleological account of history, an account that was later inherited by Karl Marx and gave it an economic or a materialist interpretation of historical development. In one of my last lectures, we learned that dialectics is a method of philosophical argument involving opposing ideas. It is a system of reasoning arriving at the truth by engaging in a logical exchange of contradictory ideas. Then what is Hegel's dialectics? Hegel's dialectics is the particular dialectical method of argument employed by the 19th century German philosopher Hegel, which, like other dialectical methods, relies on a contradictory process between opposing sides. For Hegel, all things have inherent contradictions within, whose tensions or conflict is the driving force of change and eventually transforms and dissolves them. In his Phenomenology of Spirit, the opposing sides are different of definitions of consciousness and of the object that consciousness is aware of or claims to know. In his Science of Logic, the opposing sides are different definitions of logical concepts that are opposed to one another. Hegel argues that it is possible to get out of our heads to see what the world is like in itself. Therefore, he believes that we can have knowledge of the world in itself. This is possible because reason, that is rationality, that is in our heads, that is in us, is in the world itself. Reason in the world enables us to understand reality, and that is why we can have knowledge of reality with our, with our rationality. Hegel argues that everything that is rational is real, and everything that is real is rational, and he accepts dialectics as the principle of all natural and spiritual life, or the moving soul of scientific progression. Hegel's dialectics considers all things in continual process of becoming and easing to be, in which nothing is permanent, but everything changes and is eventually superseded. That is, Hegel saw change and development as the expression of the word spirit or idea, realizing itself in nature and in human society. Hegel not only accepts that a dialectical reason can overgrasp a dialectical world, but also believes that it is possible to get beyond skepticism or nothingness. Hegel's dialectics produces a linear evolution or development from less sophisticated definitions or views to more sophisticated ones later. The dialectical process thus is Hegel's method for arguing against the earlier, less sophisticated definitions or views and for the more sophisticated ones later. Hegel regarded this dialectical method or speculative mode of cognition as the hallmark of his philosophy. To have better understanding of Hegel's dialectics, there is a need to see in brief the fundamental or basic tenets of his ideas that characterizes his philosophy of dialectics. Number one, Hegel's dialectics is based on the principle of totality which implies that only the whole is true. Every phase 
or states for a moment is incomplete, thus partial and thereby partially true. By totality, Hegel means totality which preserve within it each of the ideas or stages that it has overcome. It is the product of that process which preserve all of its moment. In the Phenomenology of Spirit, Hegel takes up the problem of totality from the perspective of totality itself. That is, the truth is what in itself infinite. It is only everything, that is, the totality which is infinite, for it has no logical point outside itself, which provides its own frame of reference, from which its nature is to be derived. Number two. Fundamental to Hegel's dialectics is the German term Aufhebung, translated as sublation. This Aufhebung, says Hegel, has a double meaning, that is, both to cancel or negate and to preserve at the same time. Hegel's dialectic is thus a dynamic movement towards the whole, that is, totality, where nothing is lost or destroyed, but preserves what it overcomes. The whole is an overcoming which preserves what it overcomes. Every stage or phase or movement in the history of consciousness and fault imminently, according to its own logic, through its own internal movement, falls into a movement of negation. At such a point, consciousness is compelled to pause it and a, an opposed position. This dialectical movement or states thus involve a process of self sublation or a process in which the determination from the moment of understanding sublates itself or both cancels or preserves itself as it pushes onto or passes into its opposite. Number three, negation is the inner life force of Hegel's dialectics. Negation or the power of negation is dynamic to Hegel's thinking, by which he means a wide variety of relations, like difference, positions, reflections. It is by means of negation or negativity of thought that the static becomes discarded or dissolved, made adaptable, and recovers its eagerness to push to on towards the whole. Negation or contradictions within any category or phase or stage or moment are synthesized or sublated in a higher movement, that is, the negation of negation which in turn goes on to generate its own inner contradictions. Hegel unfolds pure being dialectically, that is, he brings out the eminent and the key characteristics and the inner life of pure being. That is, pure being lacks all determinations other than the fact that it is. And to be something that simply is with no other qualities is to be nothing. So from being is narrated the concept nothing. But nothing too has been. It is therefore a something. The contradictions open up by these two logical determinants, that is, being and nothing, is sublated in a category of becoming. Becoming is neither being or nothing, and yet, at the same, it preserves the characteristics of both. It contains an identity in its difference. In this way, the process and the end result are unified dialectically. Number four, the organic form of Hegel's dialectics is triadic structure. It follows a pattern thesis, antithesis, synthesis. The first stage is the moment of understanding or the moment of fixity in which a thought, concepts or forms appears to be stable but on reflection proves itself 
and satisfactory in complete determination. The second stage is the dialectical or negatively rational moment, moment of instability. In this stage, the early negation is not only affirmed but also reflects inadequacy within. That is, the supposed fixity in the first stage passes into its opposite through the process of what Hegel called Aufhebung or sublation. This dialectical moment involves a process in which the moment of understanding, which was which was within the first stage, sublates itself because of its own dialectical characters or natures. The third stage synthesis moment is the speculative or positive rational moment where the unity of the opposition between the first two determinations is grabs. Also the inherent inadequacy contradiction is again reflected and negated. This is a clear division from the traditional argument which believes that when the premises of an argument lead to a contradiction the premises must be discarded altogether, leaving nothing. The speculative moment negates the contradiction and it leads or produces a determinate or defined nothingness. Because it is the result of a specific process, it grows out of and unifies the particular character of those earlier determinations, or it is a unity of distinct determinations. Hager argues that if the result is taken as the result of that from which it emerges, then it is in fact the true result. In that case, it is itself a determinate nothingness, one which has a content, or as he puts it, because the result, the negation, is a determinate negation it has a content.